<laughs> I grew up outside of Detroit, and uh, you know, my mom and dad struggled to put me and my sister in a pretty fancy private school. And after I finished the second grade, the teacher went to my mom and said, you know, Mrs. Baker, we love having your son in the class, but I think he lacks a little maturity and he's not really keeping up with the other second graders. So maybe we should hold him back a year and have him repeat the second grade. And my mom said, you know what, I see that in him too. And I had the same concerns and you may be right, but I want to be very clear. I'm only paying for the second grade one time. <laughs> Needless to say, I was in the third grade the next year. <laughs> um, I was at an event like this about five years ago, and the speaker um, was wonderful. And he quoted an author named Jack Blauzak and a mantra that he had. And when I heard it, it kind of helped me think about my life to date and also kind of shape how I think about things going forward. And it's very simple, three words, learn, earn and return. And they are a powerful three words. And I thought, you know, I may talk about the three of those tonight. Uh, you know, we talked about Cirrus. Cirrus is a technology focused private equity fund. So I think a lot about technology as well. So I want to take those three words and layer on top of them how technology is really changing our world and the black community today. So as everybody in this audience knows, the technology industry has been growing like gangbusters. It's the largest growth driver in our GDP, employment, and wealth. But what makes technology so powerful and also so disruptive is that to participate in the technology industry, you have to have education. You have to learn. And the technology revolution is a lot different than the industrial revolution. You know, many of us here, our parents and our grandparents came from the Deep South, moved to the Northeast and Midwest, and worked in factory jobs. And what was required to move from farming to factory, the skill set wasn't that much different. But moving into technology is dramatically different. You need to be educated. You need to be an engineer. And that's where all the wealth is being generated today. But here's the problem. As black people, we represent about 15% of the United States. We only represent 1% of the workforce in technology. And it's a big issue. So we have to learn. Now, I'm happy to report, when you look at historically black colleges, they only represent about 3% of the colleges and universities in the United States, but 27% of the black engineers in this country came from those colleges. So they've had an incredible impact. And we have to continue to support that. Let me move on to earning. And when we think about the tech industry, we think about the Bill Gates of the world, the Mark Zuckerbergs, these tech entrepreneurs who took a ton of risk and created these fabulous businesses and generated billions of dollars of personal wealth. So there is a huge return if you take entrepreneurial risk. But even when you go a few steps below them, there's a lot of wealth being generated in tech, a lot of earning power. The average tech employee makes $96,000 a year. That's two times the median family income in the United States. Right, so one tech employee makes the same amount as a family, twice as much as a family of four. But we are massively underrepresented in the technology industry, therefore we're leaving behind a lot of earnings potential, and that has to change. I think the biggest reason that we're not participating in this is that as a community, we're afraid to take risk. We're afraid to be entrepreneurs, we're afraid to try new things, and that's really holding us back, particularly in the technology revolution. Um, there's a study that was done by a professor at the University of Connecticut, and she actually looked at elite black students that studied science and technology. And she questioned why after getting these great degrees, they weren't going on to work at technology companies. And in the focus groups with these kids, they said things like, you know, I didn't see people that look like me working in those companies. I didn't think they'd really understand who I was and where I was going with my life. And so they weren't taking those jobs and therefore really impacting their earnings potential. It's a big problem. As a community, we have to push our young people to take more risk. I like to describe it, you know, when you go to the swimming pool and you're at your, the first time you're at a swimming pool with a high dive on it, and you climb up the stairs and you walk over and put your toes on the edge and you're looking down at the water and you have that gut-riching feeling in your stomach. You have to dive in, because if you're not taking risk, 
you're not generating the returns and we have to earn more as a community if we're gonna fix the cycle that we're in right now. Um, last but not least, return. And we're at a fundraiser, so we can have some active participation in the return part of this. Um, you know, the UNCF is pretty smart. Um, before they printed my name in the program, my contribution and my check had to clear. So I'm already done. <laughs> but I'm here tonight to make sure that everybody else contributes. And it's not just money, it's also time. You know, we are at this fancy party in the Hamptons. Um, a lot of educated people there, a lot of strong earners. And I think it's really important that in addition to giving our money, we give our time. Because the more time we spend with these young kids, they're better able to identify with what success could mean for them. And then when they're standing over that high dive, the water doesn't appear to be so far away. And they're more comfortable jumping in. Um, two years ago, a gentleman named Robert Smith got this award. And Robert, I think, is the wealthiest black man in the United States right now. I think worth four or five billion dollars. When I was starting Sears Capital, Robert came to my office to help me think about what I should do to be successful. Spent hours with me. He gave his time to make sure that I understood that we could get there as a firm and help me lay out the milestones to get there. And we all have to do that if we're really going to push and change in our community. So I'm going to wrap up. And again, there are three simple words that I think are incredibly powerful. I'm going to say them again. Learn, earn, and return. And if we can get that right, we can dramatically change our community. Thank you again.